welcome to the ride companion oh, yeah. <laughs> take two take two we're in <laughs> we're recording everything is okay um i don't yeah. have any notes this uh this week i don't have any plan no nope. it's all on you dude nope. you are carrying i'm just a little oh. i'm on your shoulders you're carrying me around this is uh, weird, a little bit scary then. What if I told you the same? I have zero notes, zero plan. Yeah, but dude, you're the boss. We're going to shoot from the hip you're again. You're the boss. We're shooting from the hip, yeah. but it's, East, it's Easter. We're shoot allowed to. Him. I kind of forgot it was um, yeah. Easter, bank holiday, everything closed. Yeah, same, same. Uh, and also, uh, we don't really do it as a family. I don't know if you guys do, but we don't really do that. I, as a kid, used to. I mean, it used to be all about Basically, how much chocolate can you get? Yeah. How much chocolate can you eat over those couple of days? But now we don't, we don't do it. To be honest, no one's even mentioned it. Um, I've not really heard anything from my parents or anything like that. You know, I, know, I guess they're taking a few days off, doing some like family things. But maybe I don't fall into that category anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I've not heard from anyone. <laughs> We've been busy. We've been busy I, doing yeah. stuff here. But um, you, you see your uh, family a, a lot, one. though, don't it, you? You're very family. You're you're family guy, aren't yeah. you? Exactly, yeah. so it doesn't matter. I'm, yeah, we hang out a lot. Yeah. My dad's like my boy, and yeah. I wish I, I, I need to be it's, uh, better. It's just, just a holiday. Yeah, I need to be better. I don't yeah. need holidays as an excuse to see him, but I do need to be better at it. I just, when you go away, I, I think, think you get discombobulated. I think there's always that pressure, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's always that pressure, though, of like, I, I always have this. I'm like, oh, I should be seeing them more. I should be seeing friends more. Yeah. I should be seeing family more of it. It's. I think you always put that pressure on yourself. I don't think there's ever been a point in my life where I'm like, nah, I'm happy. Like I've seen my parents four times this week or whatever. Um, but yeah, I I do overthink that a lot. I get it be bad now because yeah, when you get a little bit older too. I remember hearing. Oh man, it was on a podcast years ago talking about. It was a guest saying, you know, if you average seeing your parents, you know, once every six months, which some people do because you live away or whatever. Yeah. It was, you know. You were saying, you know, if they live for like 10 years, you're only going to see them another 10 times. And you're like, fuck, like, that's really scary. You know, and I guess you do never know when someone's going to pass away. But it's um, it's important, I think, just to try and see them as much as possible. And I really, and I like that feeling of when you've, maybe there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a resistance to go see them or go do something with your, your mom or your dad or your family or something and when you break through that resistance and you're like no you know what i'm gonna shut my laptop i'm gonna just go there i'm gonna go for a walk i'm gonna just go go hang out have a cup of tea or something always feels good after you've done that right because i think it you know no matter what age you are if you're listening to this watching this no matter what age you are your parents like seeing you a lot more than what you probably think they do yeah definitely is that fair i'd i'd love I, I think there's something in right when you get older I don't, don't know if this is how you feel as well right I like things to not be I like when you plan something it has a certain amount of pressure so I think mm. if you I'm trying to think of a good analogy a dinner party versus popping in like I really like popping in yeah. it's like uh, the the yeah. dinner party thing, like I'm really bad. I'm actually bad at socialising. I do it all, all on my bicycle, and like the thought of having, mm. because I'm bad at it, the thought of having like a dinner party is like a big, big thing, and it shouldn't be. It should hanging out should just right. be like simple and easy, and and it is like thankfully with my family, I can just go cruise in whenever, and it's not like formalised. Yeah. But formal socialising yeah. is really a stinger for me. I don't know about you. I find it really tough. Um, I'm very similar. I think people put too much weight on it as well. Mm. It's you know, especially if a dinner party is a good example. Okay, we're gonna invite ex ex friends over for dinner, and you spend most of the day tidying up so you can pretend that you live yeah. in this clean house all the time, which isn't reality. <laughs> and then you know, you make something probably a little bit over what you're confident with, so you want to show off like, oh yeah, I can make yeah. this stuff. But now nah, I love I love just the calling. I'm a big fan of that. I remember when we first bought this house. Like one of the reasons we we moved here is because we have friends that live either on this street 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 above or around the corner and i love the idea of kind of living like a friends episode yeah where the doors always open people just come in and you don't like overthink oh we can't have these people in because we've not cleaned the rug no you know, I or like, well, yeah. you know what i mean or like the well, shit i've become everywhere. that guy i love I've become I, the like, I like guy. the hang for sure i want to be more have you well, a bit yeah like i don't 
I want people to just cruise in and there's a fine balance like of it, I think. Yeah, but like, I, like, I'm I'm good enough friends with my mates that I could tell them to fuck off if they turn up and I'm busy. I can be like, look, dude, I'm about to head out. Yeah, that doesn't matter at all to me. But whereas the other way around, really. It, everything it, like I need to this is just me personally and I don't know if everyone gets has this and I don't know whether it's since the pandemic or if it's any of those things but I'd like to hang out more tailgate shoot the shit in the garden like it's like the yeah. difference between a Michelin With star you. restaurant and street food for me Michelin star restaurant mm. is like three hours dedicated you gotta sit down stare at each other's faces look at the menu care about the menu Whereas street food, you just have it, you just eat it, you walk around, maybe you sit on a cool bench. Like I prefer that the, I don't, I don't think I'm meant to be formal as an animal. But I think probably our backgrounds and way that we've grown up is like that. So a lot of my socialising was done down the dirt yeah, jumps. by accident almost. With a barbecue. Yeah, and like, oh, let's just go to the shop. You get like the cheapest food you can. You get like the shittest burgers, the shittest bread, the shittest yeah. everything. But there is vibes of just hanging around with your friends and just shooting the shit and cooking. Is that's when I'm like in my happiness, happiest almost. Yeah, I really enjoy that sort of that space. And it's the same when you do dinner parties. I think there's like a, you know, similar to like, okay, we're gonna do a dinner party. You're gonna come at seven o'clock. Everyone's gonna put something somewhat smart casual on. You're going to bring a nice bottle of wine or the other way is like, we're just going to nip in. We're just going to, I don't know, take a bag of food. We're just going to crank the barbecue up. And for me, that's way more of a unforced fun feeling. You know, like when it's forced fun, like you try and like make conversation yeah. or whatever. Like I don't, I don't react good in that space. Or yeah, like I don't know how it, to it make it more like that. more frequent though and more relaxed. I don't know how to. Like yeah. I'd really like to, and I think you, you make a fair point there. Is is like the pandemic has changed that a little I bit for people. Has, I think eh? people do still feel a little bit disconnected. Definitely, man. Definitely, people still. I think maybe not our age group and generation, and not consciously, but definitely the older generation of like my mum was saying this exact thing just the other day. She was talking about she doesn't see many of her friends anymore, and a lot of it, unfortunately, is that separation that's occurred of the pandemic of people being more comfortable being just with your partner or on yeah. your own or just like it's just changed like which is really sad and i hope that people are trying to break that as much as possible because i hate the fact that older people aren't socializing as much as they did in 2019 or early 2020 um because that is the spice of life is just hanging out and we're a community species right we, we're meant to be around people we're meant to share stories we're meant to sit by fires yeah. and talk and just be around each other like it's how we evolve and grow and learn new things and stuff so yeah i hate i hope that it's not like that but it there definitely is that it's harder these days and again maybe it's us like growing up in this three years or something but it's maybe, for me yeah. it's way harder to just get people together one thing we've been doing is just organizing these like sunday dog walks which have been really nice we just started just inviting anyone that we know that's got a dog and we don't they don't even like have to be like really like close to you or uh, i'm not strangers obviously but but also getting these like different pockets of friends all to hang out together on a Sunday. And that's been really Do you nice. invite the humans or the dogs? Again, I just like uh, mainly the dog. The human comes second. So how do you how do you invite the dog? How do you do that? Do you actually steal dogs? We just think like, what dog What dog do we want to hang out with? Do we invite the dog, but you have to invite them through the, through the human, but the human just like basically just comes and holds them. Right, okay. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. It's more yeah, about hanging out with the dog. Sense. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's different at the moment i don't know what it is but hopefully i think english winters don't help through that yeah because for sure. we don't have that being outdoors just it's nice you know you're just gonna hang out in the garden it's more of a thing it's more of an effort in it it's like it's fucking cold and dark and you don't you just want to be in your house all cozy and shit you're so right I, i'm i'm talking about this and largely i'm talking about it because i've just come back from being away where it was sunny and where and where everyone was super yeah. good at hanging out, but but they were good at hanging out because we were all working. So then you just go for yeah. you go for a drink after work kind of thing, and um, and probably they were doing an element of like hosting my Mexican friends. So they were probably doing more social yeah. things than maybe usual. But I don't know because also I feel like in hot countries I feel like you do naturally just hang out a bit more and like chill more. You do mm. chill more if in a hot. I think you have yeah. to. Yeah. Because it's hot. Yeah. 
You're just like, let's just take a break. Let's just stand here. We'll have a night, like, a cold drink and stuff. Yeah. And do you th- chill more here yeah, and you freeze. I'd say... You know what I mean? Exactly. Literally, you'll yeah. chill. You'll freeze. Yeah, you'll chill. You'll chill. Yeah, yeah, it is true that. that, that the weather doesn't help at all. But as it comes a little bit nicer, we're definitely, you know, we've just done a bit of a garden renovation and it's like, right, we're ready to start getting people back Dude. over. Like, crank the barbecue up at the weekend and just do that. Can I do a shout out? Let's do a shout out to spring. Can we do a round of applause and a shout out to spring? Because, man, it might... I think it's my favourite time of year. Spring. But I think I said that also really? about autumn. But I think there's something about yeah, these like in-between... Yeah, yeah, all of them are good, aren't they? There's good things about all of them. I like the seasons <laughs> in general. But spring, I think I like yeah. the most. Because okay. it's the excitement right. of summer. Right. Okay. And also, it's how tires move on the ground somehow there's something different mm. going on tires moving gr- on the ground in spring the dirt moves especially well yeah. where i live it does it's just exciting yeah mate th- those longer nights as well oh as soon as that clock changes it's game on and it? it's yeah. like i can actually do some stuff past 4 p.m oh my god the days just got exponentially longer Best. and way more fun i'm with you springs up there dude yeah. all right challenge podium picks top three months of the year oh play below folks play below top three months of the year let's hear them below and why we've not done a podium picks for a while no that's I like really picks. good top so three let's, months let's, let's give it some Mate, thought that's fucking yeah top genius, three months of the year is. okay top three months of the year what we got i can't give okay, you an my answer. brain's racking like i'm thinking about it yeah because like height of summer yeah we can do it we can do it as a conversation height of UK summer is going to be up there for me because UK summer people talk smack about the UK probably a lot of our listeners think if, if they haven't been to the UK probably a lot of our listeners from elsewhere think of the UK as it, it's likely that you think it's more rainy than it is and we probably play up to it a bit as mm. well as English people I think we do we do like the summer is actually delightful it's not too hot and it's well, it is so nice, English summer. Mm, yeah, true. Last year's in particular was arguably, I think, one of the best summers that we've yeah. had. You remember Freedom Ride last yeah. year, man? How hot it was, dude! Oh, it's the dream, isn't that it? That was a vibe. That was one of the best. That was one of the best. So, yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to insert that right there. Then. So I'm going to go. My number three is going to be July. July is like we're in the height of it i think in july i get confused when things is happen, that your bronze i think july we're in the height of it bronze bronze position bronze height is july of summer. we've got free yeah we've got freedom ride happening uh we got well pretty much just just summer in general is like the height of summer i'm gonna go yeah are we gonna do months or are we gonna third do position i'm doing okay, months yeah, yeah. what are right. you doing no, no no i'm doing months as well yeah months. i just wanted to check there's 12 to choose from there yeah that's true all right, bronze position for me. I'm going to make it official. I'm stamping authority on yeah. it. July. Okay. Not just because it's Freedom Ride, but just because it's summer and we're in it. We're in the thick of it in July. We can do what we want. We can stay up until 10 p.m. outdoors. We're all good. Yeah. We're living the dream. Yeah. Also love about July, walking the dog. Walking the dog usually barefoot. Love that. Uh, just every ice cream, uh, ice lolly salads everything that comes along with shorts dude i'm a big shorts guy rarely wear, je- wear jeans so so in july we're not putting jeans yeah. on we're not putting socks on no i'm with we're you. barely wearing a t-shirt we're in the thick of yeah. it and that's me selling summer hard in july 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 okay july number three july i'm, I'm intrigued where you're gonna where are you gonna go from number <laughs> yes. three being july that's what I, that's what i'm intrigued by yeah i have it you have it i have it i have it yeah what's number two in a number two shall I carry yeah, on I, I'm, I'm, I just want to hear your okay. podium picks to be honest I'm less interested in mine okay alright uh, in at number two mm. then for me I'm going to go December okay All right. but mainly just because of the, the this is a weird one December I know December's cold but I do like when it's cold there's a threat of snow I've had some great snow weeks throughout the years like time off work time off school 
I've also got my birthday in December, which is nice. I like a birthday. But also, I love that, like, feeling. It's almost like a bank holiday feeling where people are off work. It's a little bit of a chilled vibe. Yeah. It's like Christmas is coming. You're gonna you're looking forward to spending time with the family. You're going to eat loads of good food. You're going to give. Not about getting. It's about giving in December, like right? Yeah. And I love a giving. So I like to give, not take. So that's me. December in a silver position. And now. Easy, easy, easy September. And now my number one, it's a toss up actually, to be honest with you, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go May. I'm going to go May. May was I like May. Place. May's May good, man. My now, it's, well. Is it? Yeah, May's good because we're just coming out of, well, we're in spring, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Are we in spring in May? We're in spring in yeah. May, but we're getting towards the the like the nicer bit of spring, yeah, yeah, right? Totally, yeah. Starting to just see a little bit more flowers. Trees are starting to get some greed on there. There's a chance you're gonna go out for a ride and not get covered in mud, which is lovely. And the nights are light. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. You start wearing shorts. Maybe you are still wearing socks, yeah. but you are wearing shorts. T-shirt, sometimes a hoodie. Nothing better than t-shirt with a hoodie because you just just need to take the edge off the chill on your forearms a little bit. So yeah, that's my that's my number one, mate. That's the podium right there. It's brilliant gonna be, podium. I like the th- yeah I'm... July, December, May. July, July, December, May. I really like the um, I yeah. really like the thought that's gone into that, and I think uh, I think you've nailed it. And and I like it that <laughs> I you. don't have the exact same answer. I was gonna go. That's good. Third place. Okay, coming in at third yeah. place. We've got it's making it over these. It's either October or November. I need to make a decision. Ooh. I need to make a decision. Ooh. What I'm trying to get at is I like the turn of the season into into winter, like because I like how it yeah. feels like it's get, it's becoming more cozy. I feel like it feels like the end of your year and that there's less pressure on you to do stuff. And also for me, because yeah. I'm sport brat, I often get like a trip somewhere exciting in those times it often happens for me Ooh, yeah. often it's like um south america for a street race or it's and then so then i get the i get to go away and come back and it's different it really feels like that i'll go away for 10 days and then i'll come back and it'll be different so i reckon probably let's go with let's go with october let's go with october because Ooh, it's nice. always either rampage or it's a street race and when i get back the season's turned and i'm at home so it's not just it's easy to say I like November when I'm in Mexico, isn't it? But I mean, like, it's the yeah. coming home aspect. I really like it because, yeah, the ground's moving a bit more. It's wetter and there's the promise of relaxation and early nights. Yeah, and that's and that's that's something to consider, isn't it? Because that is a nice, especially when you've come through summer and you're, like, worn out a little yeah. bit and you're like, oh, I can start just raining it in a little bit around 5 p.m., 6 yeah, p.m. Yeah, your hands are fucked by then. You've done a full summer amongst it. Your oh. hands are blown out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In number okay. December, number three. Uh, October, sorry. Yeah, let's go three. October. Yeah, October. Okay, number two. I'm gonna go. Height of summer. I'm gonna go June, just so I'm different to you. But to be honest, it's July. It's the same. I want a height of summer. Number two is the height of summer. Number two is height of summer. June, July. That's good. That's good. And historically, where do you think what's hot a season? A hot a month? Would you say June or July? They similar. I think. I think that. Oh, is there averages for UK average temperatures per month for UK? <laughs> Should we look? Yeah, please. Because <laughs> this would be this. Uh, this would be really interesting to me because I actually don't know. Right. Okay. I have them here. Are you okay. ready? Oh please, mate. Bring this it. is. Really interesting. January. So I've got high and low yeah. figures, which I guess are actually like useful because it's sort of like day and night, day and night. January, seven degrees mm. high, zero degrees low in the UK. This is for Hazelmere. So this is where I... Do they all end in zero? <laughs> it's like they're all zero. <laughs> February. The same again. Seven degrees high, zero degrees low. March, 10 degrees high, one degrees low. April, where we are now, 13 degrees high, three degrees low. So that's where we're we're at now. 
It's not too bad. Mm, it's cold out there. Here is here is why my number one is also May. See how how I linked the two things there? Ooh. I linked the two things. My, yeah, my number right. one is also May. We're coming coming straight out of April, which is the month we're in now, 13 degrees. Yeah. We're coming straight into 17 degrees high, six degrees low. So it's that turning point. It's a big difference that. That's that's pretty cool, isn't it? Four degrees difference. It's like yeah, it is. the exciting bit. And I feel like it's an important four degrees, that is. That's the difference between two layers and one. I reckon that's what it is. So we've set the bar high, dude, for May, haven't we? Mate, May's got to be, be like, killer. <laughs> for you, May 2023 has got to be, like, the best month dude, Yeah, I think it will ever. be. I think it's going <laughs> to <You know>? be. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be, man. May's going to be it sick. Is. I'm excited it for is. May. Next month is <laughs> yeah. just going to be unreal. May's coming in hot. Um, <laughs> we're going to be in the new studio we're going to be you know it dude you know it that's yeah. it <laughs> right yeah, in absolutely sick June we got 19 degrees and 9 degrees low Ooh. July we got 22 yep. degrees July the highest temperature is in it? the year so yeah you bang on we're peaking the in July peak are we? summer that's 22 degrees and 11 degrees low August we're back down to mm. 21 and 11 degrees so it's kind of still still within the peak july and august between those two yeah september yeah. we go down to 18 degrees eight at night october 14 degrees six at night november 10 degrees two at night and december seven degrees and one at night so we're actually wow. at the lowest in no January minuses in February. there which is so we don't we never average a minus temperature well that's for here which is surprising. Down south, I don't know how different. Oh, it dude, be. yeah, it's ten degrees different up here. Do you reckon it is? <laughs> it's, it's like it's mi- minus ten and one degree. Average temperatures, <laughs> yeah. Sheffield. I'll, I'll have a look. Let's see. It'll it's be interesting. It's gonna be grim. Yeah, it would. It will be. It will be interesting. Let's so, do it. Let's have a you, look. Ah, no way. January. It's different. Highs of seven degrees. The same. As where I live. Yeah. Lows, two degrees. Yeah. You are across the board higher, lowest. <laughs> you don't even go down to zero. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. If we just like dispelled the myth that it's colder up north. Mate, I think we have. Has it just been like... I think we have. Smashed. We just did it. Why didn't no one look at the data? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, right you don't go down to zero Dude, at any point north. and you have a cent you have basically a- oh, I tell you I tell you we do mate I can tell you if, I can tell yeah, you yeah this is just averages so obviously you do but like the, on this averages is like when, this is like when people edit their own Wikipedia pages and they just put shit in there <laughs> that doesn't make any sense <laughs> mate across the board it's just your lows up. are your low averages are higher than where I live which is nuts isn't it who knew Nah, I, d- I certainly didn't. There you go, man. It's colder down south. Colder down south. I think... God, it's so much better up north. You've got, like, it keeps getting it better, keeps, yeah, which is really annoying. It keeps annoying. on giving. It, you get yeah. one degree less warm in the height of summer. 22 average and 21 wow. for you. So there's really barely any difference, except you're a bit warmer in the lowest end of the spectrum. Who knew? Wow, give it up for the North, round repl- hey, Moment of silence for the round North. Round of applause for the North, round of applause for May. We've got a load of winners already. <laughs> what are we giving away? We're not even giving anything away. We're just winning. We're all winners. Yeah. It's spring. Just good vibes, it. man. Yeah. We're just giving good vibes away. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah, dude. Spring fever. It's, it's good, man. It's good out there at the moment. What's it like being home, though, mate? Like, you've been away for such a while. Like, what are, what are, the, what are the things that you look forward to when you get back? And it's like, oh. Because you said, you know, the other day, I think by a text or a phone call, you were like, I'm just trying to be at home yeah. and just be at home and enjoy being at home. What are those things that you really look forward to about being at home? Great, great segue into the next section, which we could call Ollie's renovation project stalling. <laughs> we haven't done as many updates on the renovation as I'd, I'd, um, I'd kind of initially planned. You haven't because, been there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but like a lot of people are actually interested because a lot of people do it themselves. And yeah. I think it's relatable content, mate. Yeah. And that's what we deliver, right? Okay, so this next bit relatable of relatable content. content is going to be people's renovation pro- projects stalling. Like anything in life, 
you do lose um, momentum a lot of the time and I rely on momentum and it's been very difficult to get people in for work whilst I've been away. It just seems everyone's busy, no one yeah. wants my money. So I have come to a dead stop whilst I've been, I've been pretty much away for a month and nothing extra has happened, not one thing. So I wanted to be back at home. I feel like mm. I've done quite a lot of um, my biking work and I need to tick off some projects at home. You know, yeah. Okay. So I've been trying yeah. to do that, yeah, trying to trying to uh, trying to organise that basically, so that we can get get this ship moving forwards again. Because I feel like it's a big ship, and with a big ship, it takes a bit to get it moving again. So yeah. Mm. Mm. What are the main projects that have stalled out on? That have come to a grind in? No, every every single you know, project. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. With with okay. me going away, all, right. all projects come to it come to a halt I just need to get back on it dude I need to get back on it because shout out girlfriend <laughs> no they're, they're fantastic <laughs> it's just not not a, not George's thing construction but like we no. um, we have so many jobs <laughs> to get on with it's just crushing I can't wait to get to certain there's certain just points you know like I still don't have carpet down upstairs and once I have carpet down upstairs I can actually move right. things into rooms and I can yeah so I need a bit of plastering done. Okay. I, need, I need carpets down and I need to finish something. It really feels that way. It feels have like you nothing is finished. remained with the same... Have you have you kept with the same workers throughout or are you switching between? Because this is one thing that we've seen over the years of, you know, not really doing houses, but definitely being around people who work in trades and this and that, right? There's this massive disparity between tradesmen so one guy comes in let's say this is a good example actually he comes in does the bathroom guy comes in does the bathroom and he's like honestly this is the best like this bathroom's perfect i've moved this i've done that it's like tiles are perfect baths perfect super level another bathroom fitter comes in next day whatever week after who the fuck's done yeah, this? Nah, Look at I this shit. Just the, it's yeah. shit. Like they've done it, like there's such a massive yeah. disparity between it. It's crazy. No, that's so I was wondering, the, like, do you stick with the same people? That's a classic or? thing that is. I wouldn't have done it this way, is a classic tradesman thing. Oh, I wouldn't have done it like that. Oof, no way. Yeah. No, well I Yeah, I, look at the message made yeah. that. And you're looking at it and you're like, it looks okay, yeah. like to me. <laughs> it looks no, I great. can't blame it on anyone. I'm trying to do as much as I can myself, so I really can't blame it on anyone. It's me. I need to put okay. the right bathroom floor down and I can't expect George to put the bathroom floor down decorating I could it, it, no. like we could we could do with a bit more we could do with someone doing a bit more decorating around him that'd be good just painting it's just, yeah it's just like getting stuff like it's going to be really nice to have upstairs finished and I've got a bit more plastering to do upstairs and then we can carpet mm. the whole thing and then you really like then we're really at a stage where we are nearly done upstairs then we move on to downstairs nice it's just, I, I think anyone who's taken on uh, or started a project that takes a little while, it's like, it's, it's really hard to keep on ticking them off at the same intensity. Like when I, before I went away, if I had 15 minutes before I came on the podcast, for instance, I literally in those 15 minutes, I would fill a load of holes. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not like a big yeah. job. It's not a difficult job. I just fill holes and then after the podcast it's just I'd momentum that, in yeah, it you yeah. just keep going doing stuff and it just yeah. as long as you just get in bed each day and you think fuck yeah I did that fuck yeah I did that it's just that whole kind of one step at a time instead of looking at it as a mountain you have to just look at it as just taking forward steps and I've just not yeah. had any forward steps so but next right. week's gonna be right. big we're getting back amongst it I'm gonna be uh, yeah yeah Ticking them off, ticking them off, biking loads and ticking jobs off here. Like people are going to be in here. And you purchased um, a shipping container? Yeah, we got a shipping container. We've got a shipping container, nice. which is a terrifying prospect because it's like, well, you probably have seen the amount of bikes getting nicked at the minute is... Yeah, it's bad down pouring. south. Yeah. Again, warmer up north, equally probably as much bike theft to be honest at the moment there's bike theft going on left right and center which is why you should be covered by lack of folks but it's it's gnarly down there man has there been any leads do you know the again it's probably worth talking about on here because i don't think we did last week but obviously bren's bike in particular as well getting stolen from mb 
Hey Spice, you know what's nuts, got dude? With propane this sort of stuff, got broken into. I, hey Spice, I can't remember there was another place as done. well. It's the same dudes, just smash and grab. It's not like it? smart and it's not like a, a thought out. It's, yeah, it's crazy, man. And this stuff goes like you think you're gonna see it, right? Every, look, look, you've got Brendan Fairclough's Rampage bike out there. Anyone who knows biking, has watched Rampage, whatever, knows that bike. They're gonna go. Uh, that's this yeah. bike right people but they these things just disappear they just go and it's like the, the thing is when you you know with bikes as well it's like um how do you put this without sounding stupid it's like if you were to nick a pair of trainers you could put a pair of trainers on and no one would think anything other than that's just a pair of trainers that's come from somewhere like it, it's not got a particular use case other than to be worn for fashion or whatever yeah. with a bike that's got to be sold to someone who's going to ride a bike because you can't just put it somewhere. Like the value is in selling it, right? And you just think at some point someone is going to say that is that bike. Surely it's got to go to a bike park. It's got to go to a trail center. It's just got to go riding where there's other people doing that hobby. And whether or not they just go into Europe again, maybe they do go into Europe or somewhere. But that same thing, same same principle, right? Someone is going to go. That's a rampage bike like it's literally it's custom painted someone's gonna see it but they seem to just fucking disappear into nowhere it's crazy the problem is it's layered it's it's like a it's like a crime onion it, it's like it when the person that nicks it isn't selling it they're not getting they're just selling it 500 quid a bike they don't care about what bike is they, they're selling it to yeah. the next guy and then and it's the next guy's problem to deal yeah. with like a hot rampage bike or or a bike that you know like is rare mm. it doesn't it so the person mm. that smash and grabs it's only worth 500 quid to them so they don't give they don't give a fuck they just get like any any old bike that's made of carbon yeah they can flog for 500 quid there's enough like money in, in it that it's it's yeah definitely it's really difficult it is a, it's an interesting one isn't it because i think it, it is it is like if someone if someone to buy a downhill bike they've got to be like okay this bike's pretty useless for riding around the streets. It's pretty shit, actually, for riding around the streets, you know, delivering packages or whatever you're doing. So you've got to go into the woods, and someone in those woods is going to know something about biking to see that bike, or any bike, really. Like, especially with social media now, yeah. you, they, these things are made pretty Again, hot, no, dude, aren't they? You're, you're the hot, thinking like, like a smart salesman. A propane, salesman. whatever bike. Do you know what I mean? You're thinking like a smart salesman. Thank you. you are. Because that's yeah. what you are. You're not thinking like someone yeah. who's just... The, like no one cares they if they get uh if mm. the second guy that has that bike gets 700 quid for it good day in the office 200 quid he made on that bike he bought it for 500 quid yeah he sold it for 700 quid it's gone it's, his, it's not his problem he's selling it to to someone else who's who thinks they can make a bit of money on it cuz it's a nice color of green like it 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 just doesn't even matter it just goes yeah. it just the bike's worthless. It's not. I had a bike come back Did once, you? which was crazy. I had a I had a giant STP zero. Yeah, giant STP zero. It was. I bought it in Australia, so it's like I don't think they even did this like a really nice baby blue color. I don't think they even did it in the UK. Anyway, it got stolen, and about three months later, a friend of mine who is, you wouldn't want to mess with him. Let's just put it that way. Like you wouldn't want to meet him down a dark alley, and he was angry. Let's just you know. It, He's a big dude as well. <laughs> anyway, about three months after the bike got stolen, like no leads, no one knew anything about it. I got his phone call. I was like, that's a bit weird. Like he's ringing me at this time. I was like, hey man. He goes, that bike you got stolen, is it blue with white forks? I was like, yeah. He goes, okay, hang on. And then he put his phone down <laughs> and then called me back about 30 seconds later and like, I've got it for you. Uh, the kid's not in a very good shape though. <laughs> I was like, no, have you got it? He's like, yeah, yeah, I got it for you, mate. I saw it. It was like riding down the road at the side of me. So I just got it. I've just got it for you. No way. Um, dude, the thing was three months, like it had been gone. It was like brand new when it got stolen and it was absolutely annihilated. Like it was, it had like been properly right. like, you know, um, yeah, ragdolled around it a bit. It was, it was, it was knackered, but still nice to get back. It just feels good, right? You're like, actually, yeah, I got, I got that back, you know? Yeah. But it's our own fault. Got it stolen out of a shed. Not locked. You know, pretty stupid, really. So but, we can't bring up bike, uh, just bike good to get. and getting bikes back without bringing up the Deaconator. Now, did the Deaconator tell the full story about him getting his bike back? 
on on the podcast. Do you remember? I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I tell you what. But this yeah, is a, please, this is a, can... this is a clip. If anything is going to put you <laughs> off more than, I, I I can't think of anything that would put you off more than this. And it didn't even happen. Right. So as we all know, Deeks had his bike nicked, right? Deeks had his bike nicked and he... Put, is this the Miami yes, one, right? he put it out on social media. It went everywhere. Yeah. It went within our bike community. It's pretty much... That would be pretty annoying if you were if you were a, a, a bike thief. But it's not the end of the world. Mm. What is the end of the world is that someone came back. They found the bike. It was in a garden. It had been locked up by the people that stole it, I'm, I'm assuming. Deeks, mm. with two of his veteran friends... So this this is three Royal Marines. They camped three nights in the garden, waiting for the thief to return. If that doesn't, oh. ima- thankfully, <laughs> so thankfully for everyone, the the thief didn't return. But if that doesn't put you off stealing something, the thought of like turning up back <laughs> to your loot and finding three ex Royal Marines camped out. <laughs> And like those three, realistically, they're not terrifying. like camp- they're like camping out, getting a bit like drinking whiskey and stuff. <laughs> Imagine how awful that would be. They're ready to go. You got the kid. The drop the of a hat. They're ready to oh go. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I love that story. I love the thought of it. Oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Don't steal bikes. End of clip. Very good. <laughs> no, mate. You never know who you're no. fucking with. It's true. You never know, man. You never know who you're fucking with. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Crazy. It's uh, so the shipping container is good though. Great, good. How is it? What's it like buying a shipping container? It's pretty. Oh man, I got fun l- experience. Lucky. I got say, lucky. Or? I've got one now. Yeah, I got it off George's work. It's a- it's actually a mint one because it's like oh. what they used to. I-, I think they probably stored, um, you know, med- medical stuff for dogs and cats and animals. Oh, cool. So it has. To- what I mean is, it has to be very mm. secure. So it's like. Fort yeah. Knox, this thing, it's only got one personnel door on it. It's like really, really secure. Probably never secure enough, but it, it, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Proper security door, so good. hopefully good. we'll get... And is this on the property now? Not or yet. No, I've, I'm doing the base oh. tomorrow. You know, I'm just ticking these jobs off. And like a bike shed doesn't seem very important, but having bikes indoors in the house is really getting me down. And it's just so dirt. Yeah. Every time I walk in, I'm like, oh, I've already got all these jobs to do. And now I've got muddy bikes in there and yeah it doesn't mm. even seem that secure in my house either because yeah anyway blah 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 i, I hate this because anyway. i feel like i'm just talking myself into getting the bikes nicked and you know nah. it, what a horrible way to live yeah. it's so annoying i think we're it is mate i tell you what that's one thing that the north and the south have, have got in common it's that feeling of whatever you do someone wants it and that's it's the worst feeling and and, and no doubt like you i've been to places where that's not yeah. even a thought it's not even a concept it's funny actually right i was watching um there's a really good little mini documentary on on youtube and it's about vicky golden vicky golden is the female uh yeah, motocross rider me, yeah. who sort of transitioned into free ride really good but it's i had this exact thought because one of the shots was of her garage and like any pro motocrosser, you know, it's fucking toolboxes everywhere, monster helmets all over, race plates, bikes, uh, you know, a jet ski, fucking mountain bikes. And I, those sort of shots always really have an impact on me because I'm like, I would love that, but I would hate the anxiety that that would bring at all you times. Share just it either, like, would you? Someone's eyeing this up. Yeah. Someone's eyeing it up all the time. Huh? You wouldn't want to share you know it, what I mean? you? In a but like, I remember living living in the states, and it's it wasn't even a no exactly. You'd never like you'd never put that stuff out. But I remember living in the states, and it's not even and it wasn't even a thing. It's probably changed a lot now. But where I used to be, we'd have twenty five, thirty brand new dirt bikes in a garage in a big like lock up, and you'd just go out for the day. You wouldn't lock it. You wouldn't yeah. even consider putting the fucking door down. You'd just be like, well, no one. It's just not a thing. It's not even in that culture. Again, it's probably changed now, but I hate here that it's like, lock this, check that, do that all the time. Like, you know, you can't buy a pickup truck and have a bike on the back because chances are someone's going to follow you. And especially in the moto community, it's way worse than mountain biking, I think. I mean, it really is, a, a you know, you used to, even when I was racing, man, you'd leave a track and you're looking in the rear view mirror, like, is that car, how long's that car been there? Who's in that, you know? And you, you're constantly looking behind you and it's it's, it's shit that we have to live like that. It's a culture problem. 
it's probably a way deeper conversation than just a simple people want to steal it. It comes out of desperation, right? It comes out of needing money and yeah, I, I don't think know, it's just literally too. To we've work, got too many take... people. I think that I, I think it's just we've got too many people on a small island. That's what I think it is. Mm. Okay. I don't know. Hey, should we All go right. to a, an advert? I'd love to go to an advert right now. Yeah, before we go to an advert, it's a true story. Uh, I had my hair cut the other day. It looks fantastic. And uh, I, this is a lovely segue. I don't have my hair cut very often. And uh, I did have my hair cut. And um, my hairdresser said, God, your hair feels like really good. Like it feels like nutrient rich. Honestly, this is a genuine conversation. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, honestly, nothing. Like I sometimes use shampoo. I every now and again, use conditioner probably once a, once a week. And she was like, oh, wow, it feels different. Dude. Anyway, I, I think it be. was the Athletic Greens. This is our first AG1 Athletic Greens advert. Mm. Together. Together in person. Optimised. And to celebrate, <laughs> we're going to show you how you make one. Yeah, we are. Yeah, but first, it, yeah. we should go through the points, right? Definitely, we should go through the points and yeah. then we can uh, use this as inspiration. Okay, so... <laughs> this is literally how it works. So, yeah, okay, so we've got to talk about us. But it's really easy with this product because I genuinely do use it every single day. Likewise. The mornings don't feel optimised without a scoop of athletic greens. It's completely become part of my daily routine. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done, mate. Yeah, yeah, nice okay, one. Okay, well, I'll do yeah. the next point. Yeah. Our mission is to empower people. When, instead of people, I'm going to put companionship. Mm. Our mission is to empower the companionship to take ownership of their health with a simple daily habit. Yeah. What makes you stick to a habit? And how have you made AG1 a part of your your life? <laughs> I'm loving how it makes me feel, mate. And my yeah. days are genuinely better after I've had athletic greens. Knowing that you've taken 75 different vitamins, yeah. minerals, and whole food ingredients. Yeah before your eyes are even awake and like before yeah. you're still wiping Because you have to take it on an empty stomach, right? Yeah, yeah, take it on empty. Take yeah, that's stomach. right, yeah. So it's, I do. It's literally first thing in the morning, get it done. That's yeah. how it's become part of the habit. Do you do it before brushing your teeth or after? I actually do it before, is that gross? Okay, you go with the scoop, scoop guy. So that's, that's a... Uh, and then you do a travel pack and perfect. then we can show our beautiful companionship exactly how you do this. Exactly, right? yeah. So that's a month's worth in that... In that um, it's a month's worth in here. Isn't it? Yeah, I keep that in the fridge. I keep all of it in the fridge. I don't keep it in the fridge. But, but it's, it's better for it. Cold up north. There you go, you don't need to. <laughs> do. Don't need to. All right, okay. Look, do you want to do yours first or should we do it at the same time? Let's do it at the same time because it's okay. cute. And also because it's mo mainly audio, mm. this is going to encourage people to go to the YouTube video to see us make yeah. it. Okay, the highly make drink. <laughs> drink we made. Yeah. Okay, all, all right. right. I like, oh, here we go. The spoon's amazing. Hey, by the way, I'm currently using the travel pack. You've got 30 days worth in there. Yeah. I'm currently using the travel pack. Now, when people sign up using our code, yeah. they actually get five of these and they're very useful for when you're on the road because once this is a part of your routine, you don't want to stop it. Exactly. Even exactly. if you're on the move. Beautifully said. Thanks. Okay, so you're gonna scoop, you're just gonna put yours in. I'm just gonna hey, put That's a portion in. there. That's a portion measured out into a bag and yours is a portion in a in scoop. a scoop yeah pretty much yeah so that's really good just wanted to give a shout out to the lovely container too in the spoon oh it doesn't feel high quality the spoon so nice yeah so uh what, what do, do you, you do next you, I was, exactly i just about to ask you okay well i actually like to just start things off with a little bit of swill oh is that called a swill yeah, it's nice. Oh, or circular that, motion. Like. Depends which part of the world I'm in to which way it spins because sometimes if I'm in the other hemisphere, it actually goes the other way. Is so that that's right? just completely dependent on my location. And then you go a bit of a more of an aggressive one. Yeah, and then I go with the aggress aggressive one. Um, obviously, the location is important. Yours is actually spraying out and hitting me a little <laughs> bit, but that's fine. Oh, but... uh, AG1. <laughs> um, yeah, the location is important because I've got the travel pack, whereas your location, your direction is less important. What do you important. think the ideal location to drink an AG1 is? Right where you are right now. Beautiful. Okay, should we have a... Yeah, have a take. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Undo the lid, yeah. but then, Ooh. also if you sign up using our code, you get a year's supply of vitamin D, which is very relevant at the moment, because as you can see in the background, it's very dark yeah. and a little bit dingy on this building site. So I'm just gonna give you a little little drop. Nice. That should that, that should replace the sunlight that you're not getting okay. on would a cold winter day. Would you this back in, or would you just go with it? Let's, let's, let's do a bit more, because we like this bit anyway, don't we? Now the taste test. There's no point in taste testing. I have it literally yeah, every, day. every day. It's delightful. Cheers. 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 Thanks, AG1. Thanks, Athletic Greens. The link is in the description. Cheers.
Right. We're going to have a little bit. Mm. I feel like the ad reader would be better now. I've had some of that. Long ad now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it probably would have done. We should have drank it first. <laughs> AG1 is so much more than a greens powder. Mm. It's all of your key health products in one. And that's one thing I love about it. No more massive supplement draw, man. Yeah. I used to have them all racked up there. All of the different ones, whereas now it's just boom. Literally there. It's that. Done. And that. Or that. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion. What address is that, Davey? Athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion. That's athleticgreens.com forward slash ride, ride companion. companion. And check it out. Okay, we're back. Great ad. Do you know what? Oh, yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> and very natural how you segued into it. I really, really appreciate that. It's true, um, man. Two stories. So listeners may have noticed that we haven't had any guests on for a little, for a little while. Mm. I think it's good that we're saving them up to do them in I person. Do. I, th- yeah, I, I, do. I think it would just be so much better. So, so I thought mm. it was worth mentioning, don't you? It's yeah, exciting. because we often get people reach out though that are like, oh, you should get this person on, you should get that mm. person on. And obviously, like, we do want to do that. And not having guests on is weird. Like, you know, because we do, I mean, we're shooting from the hip on this episode, but there's only so much stuff you can keep talking about. But we are like, what's important to, to notice, to, sorry, sorry to mention is like, we have been having quite a lot of technical problems. And when you add someone else into the mix, especially if it's, it's a guest that maybe hasn't been on before, or if, or if it's a guest that maybe does need, I'm going to say special attention, right? You want to give, you you want these guests to come on, you want to have a good conversation, you want to get good knowledge out of them, share good stories. And when there's technical problems, it fucks the entire thing up. And I think we've both been a little bit nervous of that recently because we've had a few bad experiences. And it's like, yeah. we can just keep going like this. People love it when we seem to just talk and riff and just be normal and, you know, weird. But uh, yeah. The plan is, hopefully, we will be in studio in May. We're a little bit behind yeah. schedule. Ollie went away for a bit. The best We've got month. a lot of stuff going on. We've got, yeah, the best month. We're going to launch in May, hopefully. I think it mm. seems like we can. I think we, we've got... Think it's um, realistic. Yeah, we can talk about this closer to the time, but we've got some stuff happening behind the scenes. We've got some videos coming out, which are going to document the uh, studio build. Yeah. There's stuff happening, folks, and we appreciate you bar- bearing with us. It's going to be, um, it's worth the wait, I think, definitely, Dude, and might, especially with some of the, the guests the that we've got lined biggest, up. Yeah, it might be the biggest and wettest of farts. This might be the biggest mm. anticlimax ever. The the you first I mean? ever ride companion episode is called the wet fart. Yeah, <laughs> so, it, this might be the wet fart. This might be the part big, two. The next, this might be the next wettest <laughs> fart. Yeah, it might be. Part we two sit that in a room. cost 10 grand. <laughs> we might sit in a room and just be like, fuck. Fuck, we really don't get on, eh? <laughs> Imagine it. Oh, no. Oh, no. no I'm hyped, man. It's going to be It'll sick. Be the vibes are going to yeah, be sick. God, the vibes are going to be great. Uh, so you, this, is, this might be a horrible bit of news. i got a staph infection in my nose. You ever had one of them? No, I don't think so. We don't have them up north. Too cold or too hot. I don't know. I've had it since I went to uh, Mexico. And it's like, I think it happens. Let's find out. Lunch and learn. (laughs) Staph infections. (laughs) Gross. The only thing I know about staph infections is that it's often found in uh, MMA uh, fighting and sweat. Like when guys sweat and... um, is that right? Like rub rub on each other. Is yeah. that not how you get? I mean, st- is that not how you got your staph dude, infection? Was it rubbing with dudes or? Yeah, probably. I mean, the thing yeah. is, do you know what I always find fascinating? I don't know if I'm a germy guy, right? I don't know. We have on us at this present moment. The moment you get out of the shower, you have like thousands of bacterias and things on you. Yeah, and so you always have. You always have the uh, bacteria on you. It's just whether mm. it can infect you, and it will infect you if your immune system's down. So, like, if you do loads of travel, your immune system is 
impaired. Yeah, that's why you often get sick when you're like, yeah, yeah, when you've been it's because doing a of lot your of stuff and... rhythm because of your circadian rhythm. So mm. you're really, you're really like at risk for these things to happen. So, but but what I find funny about all like the hand washing and all the being clean is you can try and be as clean as you want. You can't be clean. You are always going to be covered in. Like yeah. and and you have them inside you and you have them in like I mean we are it I, that is what we are yeah, we are yeah, bacteria yeah. right we are literally like, made up of bacteria like, and viruses and all it sorts must of be stuff a it's just whether they're being a germaphobe I wonder if we have got any germaphobe listeners it must it must just suck you must just be thinking the whole time about your skin crawling with all this stuff it doesn't bother me in the slightest no it's good for like, you man you meant to be like you yeah. meant to get dirty you meant to have dirt all over you which is why like I did have a bit of a problem with the whole. Um, you know, washing your hands all the time during the COVID thing. It's like, well, you're meant to just be like it, yeah. covered in, like putting alcohol in your hand. Nah, you're good. Like, I don't need that all over me. I think at all. You know, your skin is an organ. Animal, it's, it, yeah. it takes this stuff in, you know. You have to be really careful what you put on your body, which is another yeah. another story entirely. But yeah. So how did you get your staph infection? It wasn't rubbing on dudes. It was it was a travel no, thing. I, or... I actually have no idea, but I, I, I had it in my nose, which is where they like swab, one of the places they swab for when you, when prior to surgeries they swab your nuts mm. and your nose hopefully yeah. your nose first and then your nuts but no, they <laughs> use a different swab it was a joke but it didn't really go down okay. but yeah it's uh it's really uncomfortable it's just I've, I've just got cuts in my nose my nose is awful because i had two nose jobs it's just scar yeah. material so it's really like susceptible to like um do you know what i mean like scar yeah. material you know when you've got like a a cut on your yeah, shin like or pink something. skin yeah, like pink skin. Yeah, it's like that all the way up there. So I, I've always got like, yeah, it's always uncomfortable wow. and like a bit like funny. It feels a bit funny, but I've got a cut in there at the moment. Sucks. Horrible. Do you think you smell Stuff different infection. smells? Have you got like a really open, open nasal passage? Is it like a, you know, you really get air up there? Uh, definitely compared Co- to what it used to be. Yeah, we could, we could do. We should actually get Henry on. Should we get Henry on as a guest? That'd be good. One hundred. Henry Wilkins. So Henry Wilkins has done his whole career as a basketball player. Um, he's broken his nose. I can't tell you how many times. You can probably work it out from looking at his nose. But he is now going for the same surgery as I had. Um, so he's getting his nose. Uh, he can't breathe at all. Like really, one of his nostrils is completely closed, and the other one is just like. <clears throat> it sounds awful, but he's he's going to have his nose job. So maybe we could document. My brother's nose job. That's how obscure oh, this podcast could that. go. It'd be a good little series, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Henry, yeah. What could we call it? Henry's nose job. Henry's uh, nose Hen- job is not. H- bad. Henry's become becoming a Hoover with Henry Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's Hoover. Henry's yeah, Hoover. <laughs> hey, look, there's, it's work in progress, but there's some ideas floating around there. But I would actually be really interested because mine was. Mine was really when I got it done, it was really crap because the pain is just there. Oh. I don't want to like scare him away from it. I'm hyped he's getting it done because his nose is like folded against his face, but the pain is like mm. right there in between your eyes. It's inescapable, and I got a blood clot and it got st- stuck, so I had to have the oh. second surgery. It was oh, it's a mission. You can't Dude. see though, can you? Can you see the no. faint scar there where they cut that bit open? Maybe when it's in the high res, we'll be able to see it, folks. Yeah, Zoom in, there you go. post a photo on social media. Let us know you've been listening or watching. Mm. Can you see it? And, and Henry, Henry's issues Henry is purely from being off. elbowed, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, just being smashed around, yeah. Wow. Just sports, isn't it? It's just not good for you, hey? Apparently not, but super fun. Yeah. So, so fun. Mm. So fun. What are you drinking, Davey? Mate, that was going to be my podium picks. I was going to do Cordial. Let's do cordials. A... I'm up for doing cordials now. I'll do we'll... cordial. Yeah? Yeah. We double podium picking. Yeah. We're going to double right. podium pick it. Go on, I'm then. keen for it. Yeah. All right. Coming in third place, I'm going to go with... Mine's going to be really obscure because these are all things that I really like. They are. <laughs> this is... Yeah, this is... What are we? Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Go third, on, then. Third place uh, for... Yeah. Third place for cordials. I'm going to go with Grenadine. Ooh. Okay. Grenadine. It's by a brand called Tessier. I love this brand. That's also going to be in my second place as well. Grenadine, I really like. Grenadine is... What even is Grenadine? 
Um, I've only ever had that in cocktails, I think. Oh, it's fantastic. Figured it, just figured it was cocktail. alcoholic. No, alcohol is not my not my thing, dude. I'm not going to... You know what I'm talking about. I feel like, like we don't have Grenadine up north. You only have it the same as south. You only have it um, by this Tessier company. Tessier. I don't know how you oh, say yeah, it. It's French. It, yeah. Yeah, it, it, wow. yeah. God, it's expensive, man. What, that, that stuff? Yeah, it is, because it's just yeah. bought in from... But I really like that. It's sort of... Do you know what the closest thing is, it is to it? Let's let, let's make this less expensive. My third podium pick, Vimto. Vimto kind of tastes a little bit like Grenadine. It's like heavy pomegranate tart syrup. Yeah? Right. So Vimto yeah. coming in third. So that's third. your second Vimto. podium pick. No, that, that's th- that third place. I'm replacing Grenadine with Vimto because it's essentially the same taste. <laughs> All right, it's black currant okay, okay, pomegranate yeah. mix. Yeah, number two, we're gonna go yeah. mint. I love mint. Ooh, yeah, I disgusting. love mint. Everyone hates mint. I I love mint. Everyone says it's like mouthwash. It's not like mouthwash. It's fucking amazing. And it's the same co- uh, company as Tess Tessier. I really like that. Okay. Yeah, they do. They God, do mint. Posh. And then in first, nothing beats for me. Orange squash. You can't beat it. I don't uh, get bored of it. I've been drinking it for years. I'm still doing it. Orange squash in first place. Round of applause for orange squash. What are we saying for your uh, podium picks? All right. I had no warm up, but I'm not cordial guy. I'm not cordial guy at all. I do <laughs> not do cordial. It, we don't do it. The only reason that we have uh, this. So this is a. This is a. What is this? This is a. What the fuck is it? It's a. It's Ribena. That's what it is. It's Ribena. It's standard Ribena. Is that in your, is that in your top three? Yeah, it's number three. Number three is Ribena. I'm going to go Ribena just because it's, it's like, it's a, like any squash, it's a thirst quencher. And I think that's why I bought it was because sometimes right, okay. I, categorically, dude, I don't drink much other than water, water with electrolytes and um, coffee. And tea, yeah, but they're, they're, really... I don't really mix it up too much, to be honest. Uh, quite a lot of protein shakes at the moment, but that doesn't—that's not a squash, so we'll ignore that. So I only drink water and coffee as well, by the way. But I'll just yeah, give it, yeah. Know. So, so it's—I re- never buy cordial, but I'm going to really try and think back to my um, childhood here and try and you know go back to yeah. some of my favourites. But Ribena is definitely going to be at number three. It could be at number two, but I'm going to stick it at number three, Ribena's just because great. it's a. It's a great thirst quencher, but also the Ribena lollies really raise the level. Like, Ribena lolly is fantastic. Okay. Um, I don't know if I've had one of them. Nice. Number two, I'm going to go fruit and barley. I think that's the pink drink, right? That's a that's that's a Robinson's range, friend. You can get orange yeah. and mango in the fruit and barley range. You can get apple and blackcurrant. The fruit and barley range is a... Entire range. Oh, it's you a need range. To specify, dude. You need to specify oh, man. who's in second place. Okay, sorry, I'm coming in hot. Robinson's fruit. What's the pink one? Pink one. Pink. Pumpkin. I really like the pink one. Pink grapefruit. It looks. Yeah, it could be. It could be. It... No. Yeah, it's pink grapefruit. That's the one. I like the pink grapefruit one. Pink. Do you really? Yeah. That's bitter. Yeah. You're a savage, dude. Yeah. Pink but again. Grapefruit takes the edge off makes you thirst go away and yeah. then it, in at number one has got to be don't have a brand on this i don't have a brand at all actually but i'm gonna just go lemon squash lemon squash yeah mate i'm Robinsons. not coming to your squash party is the most bitter thing i've ever heard thank fuck roy bean is in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah lemon i like lemon squash uh, I, do yeah, you yeah i like i like a i think my favorite like um Ice cream or lolly is going to be like a lemonade lolly, I think, something yeah, like that. So, that. that's good, yeah. yeah. So, something quite, yeah, it's, it's quite bitter, isn't it, really? I never really thought of myself as a bitter, bitter drinky guy. But, yeah, bitter, yeah, I'm going to go lemon, lemon. That's a good, like that's a good podium spritz. pick. That is a good podium, I, 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 that is enjoyable, yeah. We've done two, this is a double podium pick episode. Yeah, we come back, we're back with the feature. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know, mate, I don't know if I like Aperol Squits. I went. I went to shop the other day, and a lemon was two pounds ten. One lemon. Jeez, dude. Really? Yeah. Fucked, it? Yeah. We're on our way out. If a lemon's two pounds ten, what are we doing here? Something's I don't going know wrong. What we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
It's tough. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's crazy. Where did we 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 almost went out for dinner yesterday for like lunch. We were out walking. It was Sunday, Easter Sunday. Walk past the pub. We're like, oh, let's just nip in here. We'll get something to eat real quick. It was more like brunchy time though, so it's like eleven, eleven thirty or something. Yeah. And a roast dinner. Bear in mind, I don't eat meat really. Emma doesn't eat meat at all. Vegan. The vegan roast dinner was nineteen pounds, and we were like, that seems like. You can get a lot of vegetables for nineteen pounds. <laughs> so yeah, we 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 that's we had a tight a tight moment yesterday. We we're like, nah, we don't need to but do all, that. Uh, an artisanal bakery is open up near us. I haven't even been there. Yeah. Rue went there the other day. He go. He said to me, "Yeah, it's lovely, really nice. You know, it's in like someone's house. You know, it's really like it's like a garage business. A flan was forty mm. quid." <laughs> Really, forty four o pounds. Like, what is going on? Wow. Right, let's what do does this. It taste questions. like this man. Is too much. I don't know. It must taste like heaven. I don't know. You must just all Mate, get them get, on the if spot. We get a, just <laughs> if we get a good guest in, we'll treat them with the flan. Right, we'll get them the forty pound flan, and we'll, we'll have like a whole can. thing. Right? We'll go hard. <laughs> Still a twenty quid flan each, and we get one God, flan so between us. Twenty quid. You fucking joking, man. Holy! <laughs> oh right. dear. Let's do some list of questions. questions. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. You got first. All right, I'm, I'm logged in again. I've got first. Yeah, I can do first if you want. Yeah, sure, mate. Go for it. <clears throat> Shut. From Darren Greener, the history of the owners of DMR. What's their background and where did it all start from? So they are both South Coast boys, Brighton boys, and they. Uh, are both bike riders and they both did the same engineering degree i believe which took them to to uh taiwan uh where they you know they were early on in sort of like manufacturing bike products in taiwan so that's th- th- their mates to this day best best mates to this day and business partners and uh <clears throat> great fun that's damien mason and matt riley dm and mr I told people for years that they go for dog, monkey, rabbit, but that's quite a comprehensive answer. I hope I hope you enjoyed. I tell you what, Darren, if you want to learn more about DMR, there's an episode that we did a few weeks ago, which is basically the entire history of DMR. Ollie's new DMR handlebar, the Oda bar, and uh, you, all of your answers will be in there. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, all of the bars are available in store now. Link in the show description. Probably Is not. Is that good? It might be, if we remember. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. I'm really enjoying mine, I'll be honest with you. Good. I'm glad. I, I really expect, enjoyed them. No, that's, that, that's the very least I expect, that you'd enjoy them. Mm. Uh, okay, next listener question. At Stitz, how do you cope with a bit of burnout from riding but still feel the guilt for not wanting to ride? This is an ongoing topic, dude. Like, we get this quite a lot, don't we? Like, burnout yeah. and not wanting to go biking. And I always revert back to my original answer, I think, personally, on this one. It's just, like, don't force it. If you want a little break, take a little break. There's nothing. There's no harm in it. But ultimately, try and get out with the crew. Get the boys together, or the girls, whatever it is, or any gender. Because gen- biking's not, you know... Um, Gender specific. Get whoever you want out. <laughs> You're getting yourself right not here, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, by the way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just um, invite anyone. We need to do anything, more ner- whatever. Need to do more nervously. Because you Okay. You can ride with anyone you want to want to ride with. That's what it's gonna the world's yeah. gonna end up like, isn't it? Yeah. Because, yeah, it is, yeah. And that's yeah. fine. That, yeah. That's good. You can invite him. You can invite anyone. Like any whatever <laughs> uh just invite just bike riders, bi- bikers. You can invite inanimate objects. Biking people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biking people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mate, I that think that's great, great advice. Get out, in a, get out in a big group. I think that's a great, great yeah. advice. I was going to say switch it up a bit. I, I, what I personally do is I switch it up a bit, whether it's like between bikes. Obviously, I'm a sport brat, so I have lots of different bikes. But maybe I'll start just doing like more flat cross-country based rides. Then maybe I'll go to yeah. pump tracks on my hardtail. Then maybe I'll build a trail. But I I managed to find biking varied enough. Maybe because I'm lucky, because mm. it can be. But that helps me personally. And I do fully know the guilt of not wanting to ride is a real thing for sure. But 
It is. Definitely. Yeah. Been there. Experienced it. Happens to all of us. It's like any hobby, right? You just go in and out of it sometimes, and that's just what it is. Yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Pizza nerds. Uh, wait, bike nerds. I got it confused there. Start again. <laughs> At bike nerds. Pizza or tacos? Davey, I think we all know the answer you're going to give. <laughs> yeah, I'm going tacos all day, every day. Got to be good ones though, man. It's easier to get good pizza than it is to get good tacos. That's the problem. There's so mm. many of these artisanal pizza places, stone baked, and the level of pizza in the UK is, in my opinion, it's pretty damn high. Like, you can get good pizza, right? But yeah. you very, very rarely can go out and get good tacos. We just it's, it's tough, but that's why tacos remain at the top of the pile for me is because when you do find those good ones, it's more of a, it's a hitter. Yeah, I hear you. It's more I'm just going to yeah. go tacos because honestly, I um, love just like clean food. I'm not, and what by that I mean food that leaves you feeling like I tell you, I'm not actually that, I'm not much of a dough boy, I'll be honest. I'm not much of a dough boy. No. I wouldn't have, if I could not, never have a sandwich again, I wouldn't be annoyed. I wouldn't be annoyed. Wow. I just like, I like wraps. I like, I don't like just bread. Bread is nothing for me. I've talked about this mm. before. I get in loads of trouble because of um, Yorkshire puddings. To me, a Yorkshire pudding barely has any taste. I don't, I don't need to do this again. I don't need no. to do this again. Don't leave not. yourself open to it, mate. No, I'm not going to. I don't like bread. I don't care about bread. Um, count me out of the bready meal. I want yeah. I want the killer. I don't want the bit that goes around the edge that you put it in. All right. That's, That's why I like tacos. Yeah? Yeah. Tacos are great, mate. Taco. Are Although great, you could yeah. argue some are doughy, but let's... Yeah. Are they? Taco yeah. shell? No, it's more corn, in it? A good, you can get corn. a gordito. A gordito yeah. is like a thick taco, but it's... Still thinner than bread. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You didn't bring one back for me, but anyway, there you go. A taco. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had a, a someone I follow on social I got media. For her... you. Okay, I got your present. Her, uh... oh, awesome! Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, someone I follow on social media. Her husband is an airline pilot, and he took a he did a flight to Delhi and brought a takeaway back. <laughs> brought it all the way back. <laughs> I thought that was great. I was like, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, Boil at 91. Have you... Mm, should we do it? Should we do it? Yeah, do it. Yeah. I mean, it's an have you ever put a toe? Me. Have you ever put a toe in your mouth during fun in the bedroom? I mean, to, for me, feet are just the last... They're, they're not really for me, feet. No. I'm not. I don't really like either. feet, so I'm not putting any feet in my mouth. I don't think no, I've ever. Put I feet wouldn't in my want mouth. anyone putting mine in their mouth either. Exactly. You know, you're out biking all day, trudging through mud, sweaty socks on, ugh, and then oh yeah, put my foot in your mouth. Disgusting. That's oh, what it's. I do you, take care yeah. of my feet though. Do you? What do you do to your feet? Do you take, do you take, care, take care of them. Care of them. What do you do? You know, like the big toes sometimes get those strands of hair on. You get you got hairy toes. Like a hairy toe. Fuck me, I hate feet. I've realised I don't. I can't even talk really openly about. Um, I don't even yeah. know. I don't look what? at the poor guys. I don't even look at them. Do you not? Oh, well, that little bit of hair that sometimes comes on the big toe, man, is like my worst. I hate it. I hate when it rubs on stuff. So I just, I always shave that off, and then I'll just use. I'll just shave like the whole foot. Yeah, I just bick it you off. Shave yeah. your feet. Just that. I, bit. I, don't, I, th- I yeah. feel like you've just dropped that in there, like casually, like that's not something weird. Where do you stop? You shave. <laughs> Where do you stop? You shave your feet. Ankle. You at the ankle. ankle. What, at what point? Yeah. I like, think you've realised halfway like, through this like, the... is slightly rogue behaviour. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, I have. Where the the round, uh, an- like the round bit it's, is, like yeah. the. You, stop you know what I mean? That yeah, that bit that uh, I don't know what you the mean. Hinge. Call it like a little hinge. We'll call it a hinge. Ankle hinge. Uh, the main where pivot. The ankle... <laughs> Yeah, the pivot where yeah. the ankle hinge is, the ball mm. joint. Stop there. You stop there, so you just get those suckers shaved up. Yeah. You ever veet the, sh- the feet? Veet the feet. No, it's quite feet, like, no. it could be a good song, wouldn't it? <laughs> it was like a nineties yeah. hard house. <laughs> veet the feet. Veet the feet. Veet the feet. The feet. Right. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> that's great. That's 
big news for me that you shave your feet. I'm fucking blown away by that. But yeah, I'm not one for feet. I think you. I, no. I think the fact that I've never veated my feet or paid any attention to them means that they're probably train wrecks. So let's not. <laughs> I keep socks on. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I keep socks on. Right. I've got a. Um, I've got one from. At set Nicky Miro. We need to see slash hear a song played by Davey on a piano and Ollie on the mic in Spanish. Holy shit. That would sound... We don't need to see. No, nah, that would break all windows in all of our listeners' houses. We don't need to. Maybe for the, the Christmas day, special. I thought of Why? you the other day. There was a bloke in the airport playing the piano and he was really good. And I was the only person who clapped for him. Like everyone was just like, oh, oh shut up. It, was, it wasn't really playing particularly nice music. It was sort of like modern okay. modern piano music. It wasn't he wasn't like playing classics or anything that but mm. it was like emotional. Still clever man. Very clever. Very impressive. You sit behind those ivories and give it five minutes and you realise how goddamn difficult that is. Like it is I've not yeah. played much, man, the last couple of weeks. I've been off it. I've only played once, I think. Yeah. Um hit a bit of a you know, you just get to these bits, don't you? You get to this wall and you're just like, I can't get past this. And then you have a little break and then hopefully you come back refreshed. Yeah. But, um, oh, it's hard. I've been also focused, you know, I've got all this stuff going on. So, yeah. yeah been tough. Getting um, ready for your giant expedition. Broad- you? Oh, yeah. And thank you, actually, to everyone who's actually made a donation to that. If you haven't already, I'll put a link in the show description. We're over the target already, which was really nice. Yes. Had a target of two hundred and thirty pounds, and we're now oh, at two six one. Nice. And the reason, actually, just because a few people ask, why have you done two hundred and thirty pound? So that yeah. is, yeah. But also you caught the virus, the twenty three virus, the twenty three virus. But also, tw- it was. I worked out that like two hundred and thirty pound was enough money to put two families in a hotel for one night. So I was like, that sounds about right. So that's what it is. Oh, nice. But yeah, please more more you donate more. Um, more pain I go through. Um, Brod's Graham. And I'll, I probably will keep people updated with that as well, actually, because this episode will come out on Wednesday. I'll be setting off on Friday. And I guess I'll just try and post some updates on the probably the Ride Companion Instagram yeah, rather than my own personal one because I don't really use it too much. And then hopefully I'm going to take the GoPro and make a little bit of an edit as well. But we'll see. Hey, can I do, it's not about on behalf that, it's about of um, everyone listening to this, best of luck, Davey. Mm. Head down, you can do this. Appreciate it. Round of applause for Davey. Take it on. This is for all of us in the <laughs> companionship. You. Get it. Thank you. All of the biking people. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Brods Graham, what's the best slash fastest mode for EMTB descending? I'm a bit nervous about that challenge though. I'll be honest with you. Like it started to sink in a little bit. I sat in the garden last night because uh, this is something I do quite a lot. Like I'll have a really hot bath, like a sauna style bath. And then I'll go sit in the garden and cool down and just, it's just nice, right? You just like get cool. You're not sweaty. And I was like, fuck, it's cold out here. <laughs> I'm going to have to sleep in this for two nights. <laughs> like, yeah. And get really set in. I was like, fuck, this is going to suck pretty hard. Like, and it's been pretty windy up here as well. And the wind, I was just like, oh, this is going to be actually pretty gnarly. Just being outdoors for two days with no I don't break. believe you anymore after our weather anyway. insights. It's like bloody Miami where you live. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just got like a tiny pair of shorts and a tank top. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All no, right. You'll, you'll get it. Sorry, you'll, you'll I just be good. To You'll be good. Throw it out there. No, absolutely. Uh, at Brodsgram, what's the best slash fastest mode for EMTB descending? That's something that I've never really thought about. What Do you have um, a particular like uh, setting that you go in to descend on the e-bike or do you just leave it in whatever you climbed up on? It's something steep. Or yeah. has something in it that requires basically tur- I, I I don't have it in turbo if it's really steep or if I need to worry about um, getting like an unexpected boost. So when you move your feet around at low speeds mm. or if you're going down something really steep, you can like um, engage the motor and jolt forwards and put your front wheel over a turn. Right. So so I do actually switch it down one i did a stair gap yesterday yeah. and i pedaled towards it and then at the last minute realized i was, wasn't going quite quick enough it was quite a big stair gap and i went to use the burst 
and obviously we were above the speed limit so I nose cased a double stair gap which oh. was which is like the opposite problem but yeah I think yeah. Um, descending probably I would, I'd knock it down a peg personally because That's good. I've never even thought about it mm. but now you've mentioned it it has happened once or twice where I've yeah. like just yeah you've gone to maybe just put a crank in and then all yeah. of a sudden you're going like Mac 10 and you're just like whoa no I don't yeah. want to go that fast I just wanted one crank never thought about that but yeah I'm going to try that next time I ride my e-bike on steep stuff I'm going to try it in eco yeah do it I'm really turbo Terry on an e-bike as well I'm really only yeah I know you are fuck with that mode but just descending mm. when you don't want it happening I even thought about when I last broke my ankle landing off that drop, whether what had happened was I left it in turbo, the suspension bottomed out, and because of the chain growth, it engaged the motor, yeah. jolted the crank back into my foot harder. I wow. even thought about that Maybe. because these motors are very, very powerful, and um, yeah, and uh, and they don't know what you're doing, where the bike is, what situation you're in. No, it's like exactly, if that yeah. crank turns past that point it goes and that's yeah it doesn't no the biggest that like it terrifies me when you're out on a ride and someone's chain comes off or someone has something in their rear derailleur or and they don't turn the bike off always turn the bike off because that motor is seems very harmless and just fun but if you get your fingers near the chain and you engage the motor by pulling it the wrong way you just cut off your fingers and it like the those motors are so mm. powerful in terms of like just spinning a pointing yeah, chain ring and stuff. over your fingers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty scary. So we've turned into just uh, being like like parents tips. That's turned into, yeah. hasn't it? Safety tips. Yeah, but it's with uh, all helpful. Your helpful. Hopefully. Helpful. Hopefully. I've been a, yeah, I've not been on my e-bike for a little bit. A few other people have, which is nice. And what that's what I do like about having a couple of bikes sometimes. Yeah. It's I, I almost feel like a good ambassador because people are like, oh, I'm on about buying an e-bike. Have you, can I borrow one? I'm like, yeah, come and grab it. Like, please yeah. take it out. And then everyone who borrows borrows one comes back like, okay, I need this bike. Where do I buy one? <laughs> He's just like, well, you go here, here, here. I love it's, doing it's it when I'm good. away. Just leaving my bikes with people. It's so good. E-bikes especially. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know afraid. you're going to get a convert. Yeah. And a couple uh, of scratches. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, next, after you. Right, this is one I don't know the answer to. Maybe you can uh, you can tell me more about it. I'm not sure. So it's from Tim Uh Trails for Wales has stalled for four years now. How can we get government to see benefit of wider MTB access? So I actually don't even know what Trails for Wales is. So maybe we can do a, a small, quick luncheon. Later. I don't either, I'll be honest. I don't know what um, Trails for Wales is. Um, Let's I'm going to guess the clues in the title, but yeah, when, yeah. I don't know what the actual. Uh, yeah, nothing comes no, up. No, there's nothing on... coming up. I tell you what, we're going to have to we're going to have to pass on this, and we're going to have to get uh, Tom Blackmer to write in with a little bit more information. I th- may, I thought maybe Trophy yeah. Wells might be established charity or something, trying to get obviously yeah wider MTP and we can use this platform but... to uh, mention it and yeah. hopefully. Um, someone's listening who can help. Yeah, message in next episode. Message Thank in, you. Tumbluck, Tumbluck Mur. Okay, Millsy four six nine. Do either of you still ride motocross? Uh, and in a separate question, how did you get into working in the MTB industry? So, I think that's interesting. Mm. You, you rode motocross for years and now don't. Yep, correct, correct. I did ride motocross for years. And kind of discovered at a pretty early age that I wasn't very good at it, but then kept kept doing it, but with a different goal in mind. And that was really interesting to go through that at quite a young age. Obviously, the goal when you are super young was to be a professional motocross guy. And then as you get a little bit older and a little bit more wise, and uh, you start realizing that there's a lot more, I wouldn't say politics at play, but definitely a lot of money at play. And I started to think, look, maybe this isn't going to happen as far as being a professional athlete. And also maybe this isn't going to happen um, the way that I wanted it to. It's simply not. But if you keep riding and keep keep in those circles, there's other opportunities to make a living out of that sport. Um, and I think that's 
myself and also our friend obviously jace at gypsy tales we both went through that exact same thing we were like this is what i want to do and then you kind of realize maybe i don't have the talent don't have the money don't have the time most importantly don't have the skill and then you go right okay but there's other options like so jay started picking up a camera i was like wanted to be a mechanic so that's the route i went down first moved to the states obviously did some work over at a company called mx heaven for a, a few years and then also started looking at like okay so there's a whole industry here that's got job opportunities whether it's been a sales rep whether it's been working for a brand and that's how i got into the industry was looking for other opportunities to work in a sport that you call your hobby um the way i got into it was being quite cheeky and i think sometimes you have to um, put yourself out there i called um the distributor for for one industries at the time was a a lot of people probably remember one industries that are part of the 661 group and stuff and i just called them and said look i've seen that you don't have a sales rep in the north of england it's red hot up here people love biking they love you know they really need like the aerated race kit because it's so fucking hot all the time can you uh can i get out there and do the job for you and that's literally how i got my job in the industry so you were- i think from the outside looking in it's really clicky and it is it, definitely people come into motor industry and bike industry and they don't seem to leave very often they circulate around different brands and stuff like that but if you can make the right connections um then yeah i'm looking at Millsy's 469's profile photo too which is a dirt bike like a motocross bike so i'm kind of thinking he's coming at this from a motocross angle so if you're young best thing you could do work in your local bike shop like work in a bike shop get to know reps get to know brand managers get to know distributors and then see where it goes from there oh yes wow fantastic advice i got a question for you what what what, was there a point it makes me sad hearing that you just had that moment where you thought this i'm not good enough what was Mm. there like a point that you felt that way uh you know like one event mm. or one moment or something like that i don't think there's like like a moment no it's it's an interesting one that there wasn't i don't think a moment but there was like a realization when you're a kid i think oh i think you how do you put it when you're young and you, you know you for me you're watching supercross and you're watching like jeremy mcgrath and all this sort of stuff and you're just like that is so achievable if i just keep going i can just like you know you can get there everyone can get there but i think unfortunately the reality is for 99.9 percent of the population it's not a reality and i think i first started noticing it when i was probably 14 to be honest that's when you're making that you're on like big wheel 85 you're looking at maybe jumping onto a one two five and you start noticing that maybe the fast kids have got a lot more backing than you maybe the the parents are paying for them to be on a team and also it jumps up quite a lot financially then as well it goes from you know at the time let's say a big wheel 85 was two and a half grand let's just say you know a lot of kids that were quite quick would probably have two of those and that was you know it's still five thousand quid plus all the kit and travel and stuff it's still a lot of money but then you jump up to a one two five and it was like okay they're like five thousand four thousand four and a half thousand pound or whatever that that jump there i think is where a lot of young younger guys and, and families just become a bit like we can't keep doing this and then i think around that era for me as well is when like the four stroke stuff started happening you know it's like oh four first four strokes started coming out like kawasaki launched one first honda then brought out their their 250f and it's like they were super expensive and you just a lot of it does come down to money, I think, as well. And it's like, you see, yeah. one of the major ones I remember, man, was Tommy Searle. So Tommy Searle, I know, I was like never on Tommy's level. But you could hear, this is before social media, right? But you hear all these stories of, okay, the family have like remortgaged the house and the, just to get him onto a team. And it was all that sort of stuff happening. But you just start thinking, I've either got to be like an absolute one in a million kid with loads of talent, which I, which I'm not, or it's just not, and it's just, or it's just not going to happen. And I think you do have to um, give in to that at some point, and just be like, "Look, it's not going to happen." So I can still do some in it. I fucking, I, I'm, I'm. Uh, it's true I'm, though. Yeah, but well, there's a lot of wasted opportunity the out there. I think I've never given. I, I've, I've never. There's no reason why it might fuck. I don't know. It, it's sort of revealing what what I. Th- I've never approached something and thought I couldn't 
do it. I think if someone can do it, then I could do it. I just, it's just a matter of working yeah. hard enough, if you know what I mean. Like in terms of like you think? skill or yeah, I think mm. Sam Hill's just worked harder and that, and that's why he's quicker. And Brendan's just yeah. quicker because he's I think worked this... harder at being quicker. You know what I mean? Like if you just yeah put yourself to anything, I think it. I, I think it all the time, dude. I think oh, well, if someone else has done that jump, then I can do it as well. It is know. interesting. This I, I I find this topic super interesting because mm. I, I'm with you, but there's also an element of other, well, there's other elements that come into play. There's like yeah. there is financial backing, right? And there's all there is a natural <laughs> talent thing. I'm sure we both know people that <clears throat> have ridden dirt jumps as long as you, but yet. Yeah, for some reason, they're still just like, at, like average. It's just, it's just not there. Like they just don't have that thing. Whatever that thing is, it's just not there. I think and I that think thing is just believing in it. Like obviously, there's. I, I, I know, know. I know exactly what you mean about the examples because I, I wanted to be a basketball player and I'm mm. six foot and not quick enough at six foot, or I'm not Steph. Co- I don't know. Like I, there's, there's obvious like um, genetic ones that clearly play a part and like there's a reason why yeah. maybe I couldn't be a Tour de France rider or whatever maybe you could f- yeah. find those reasons but I think otherwise I think it's a mindset thing from in my head wow I like that a lot of stuff Mate, I, is like, yeah I reckon yeah. I could have been I think a promo you can be a- guy it's good I, 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 mate I believe in you no doubt you could but it, but there's got to be so much other luck and stuff on your side, especially yeah. with a sport like that, which is one of those sports where it does a lot of it does come down to money. Like it does. I mean, I, you always see these kids like when you're driving around in towns and stuff, you see kids doing like massive wheelies down the street on, on a motocross right, bike, right, with no helmet on. And uh, some element of me is always like, <clears throat> that kid's probably like really good on a bike. Like he's probably got really good bike skills, but he just doesn't have the opportunity. <clears throat> there's just yeah. not there's not the opportunity there to take him to the track and buy a bike and then, oh, that bike's blown up. Cool. We need another 1500 quid now to have an engine done. Yeah. I think Moto is definitely one of those things that's quite a, it does come down to money a a lot of the time and and, and not just like massive amounts of money, but enough money just to keep it going because the fact the Cooper Webb, Cooper Webb episode of the Gypsy Tales that's just come out is really good because Coop's talking about that exact thing, how, Adam Sincere and Adam Sincereulo coming up had like everything. He was like yeah. the golden child of dirt biking at that age, like young age. He was riding with McGrath and fucking yeah. Villa Perot all the time. And Coop was just that kid that just wasn't. He just didn't get those opportunities and he had to work really hard. But there's a lot of natural talent there as well, right? Like he's not just a kid working hard and getting 20th. He's like, no, he's up there. I don't know. I feel like I need to say as well, so, I, at no point did I ever display that I had any promise or talent on a motocross bike. I think all I really mean is same. I had a motocross bike <laughs> and I, all, I had like a local track. So in my head, if you have a bike and you have a track, you just got to repeat over mm. and over again and have mm. supportive parents or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, mm. I, I, I think... All right, so... If you had the same upbringing as Siren Cerullo, yeah, then do you still count yourself as not being able to be a promoter guy? In what way? Like, because you just missed the opportunity because you just gave up, or like, or just if that we mean? No, I guess when you say it, it it makes it sound like you don't have the talent. Like the talent is like a given thing. Mm. It's like a thing that was just given to to someone. I, I think that's. What I think I'm there's got to be. At. There has got to be something in there. There's got to be an element of it, and and I think if you relate it to our spot, like look at what Jackson's doing at his age, and how many kids have ridden a bike as much as, if not just a little bit less than him, but yet he's just got this special something. What is that? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Like he can rock up to a street race and finish second and I think I'm just uh, weird because I, I, th- I think what the, in the people around me that I see do well they start yeah. they w- when you when you go riding at the trails they're one of the first people to do a run through and they're one of the last people to stop so it, I, I think I'm mm. not on the side of thinking there's like a god-given talent I think there's just 
hard work and like your interpretation of what you watch so like I think like if you pay attention to what's going on you don't just like float through and not pay attention like if you study stuff in an obsessive manner then I think there's more I don't know it's really interesting conversation actually really interesting I'd I'd love to hear from people what they think of the I think the term natural talent is how much is natural talent and how much is work it'd be interesting to I think hear what there's another think example which I don't quite know I quite I don't know the answer to this but like there is another thing that Pinkbite did a while ago where they gave a guy didn't they just give like a random guy like factory support this and that and it's like does it change anything I don't know or has there still got to be to be Richie Rude you got to be Richie Rude <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I'm interested in this topic as well, man. Because I, I, I mean, maybe, at, maybe at a young age, I personally just was like, "This isn't going to happen," and you just yeah, like yeah, not yeah. give up, but you go about it just a different way. It's like I'm not in it now to turn pro. I'm in it to make a living, being in it, doing something in it, just so I can keep my hand in it. Motorsports, and I've always tough, done that. Isn't it? Yeah. Motorsports is tough. You're Dude, right. it yeah, does make you think. Yeah. It is. You just need someone like imagine. Okay, let's say if Red Bull F1 now said to you, right, Ollie, five years, right? We're going to give you five years. You're going to have everything. You're going to be in the virtual car, training, everything. You think you could still? You think you could like top ten a Formula One race? <laughs> no. Sadly, I think my brain is past its like malleable sponge period where it could pick up yeah. the intricacies of grip and driving and downforce and line choice I, I don't know I think like I just hate the idea of like a young person ever thinking they can't do something oh, I'm with you and, Mate, and, yeah like, totally like, totally you know, there's obviously like age related um, realities that come your brain is just uh, it's just not set up for mm. it whereas whereas I do I personally do think and maybe this is this is revealing and this is me being um believing in myself too much but I absolutely think that I if had I had an upbringing where I was karting and then I had all the support I think I could be a Formula 1 driver I think that the only difference between me and anyone else is that I'm more obsessive over stuff and I try harder yeah I I think that's it that's a a great point yeah yeah it's it's like how how do you what do you do with that energy when you realise that it's yeah. going to be tough? It's like Rocky, a, a great example, actually. You go to a motocross track. When I was young, there was a kid called James Lasso who was like local kid. His dad was like, you know, had a dealership and stuff like that. And they had like a massive Winnebago camper van, three bikes, all the gear, like super sick stuff all the time. And then there's me in our shitty little Renault traffic van with a beat up 1994 YZ80. Yeah. And at that age, what do you do with it? Do you look at that other kid and go, he's going to make it, I can't. Or do you go, no, fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show him like, it's like, what do you do with that energy at a young age? And, you know, unfortunately, you're young, you're naive and you just go one way or the other, I think. (laughs) Yeah, totally. uh, One of the best examples and one that's fresh on my mind because I've just come from the gym with him is Bernard Kerr. He's like a really Mm. good example of just, he's going to try harder. Like... I, I don't think it's been given to him at all. I think he's tried harder, he's mm. trained harder. He's uh, he's also very analytic about riding and how to, you know, he takes how to be quicker and how to be better as a project and he's taken it as his like life's project. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me that he's, there's literally zero surprise. I've never met anyone who's approached it like him uh, in terms of like right. intensity and obsessiveness and just hard work and like anyone who anyone who hangs out with him will it's exhausting it's like it's it's too much it's not it's not a shock to me i'm not like fucking bernard's quicker than me he's so talented (laughs) you know it's not it's because he's fucking (laughs) he's up earlier he's going to bed later at the trails he's the last one on the trail like i don't know and he's always been like it since he's a kid so yeah right really cool cool uh, subject actually i don't know it'd be a great it'd the... be great to have this conversation with really because yeah. he, uh, i feel like bernard maybe could have gone either way he could have been a promoter guy maybe yeah or, or he, a uh, i don't know or a really successful drug dealer or a really successful yeah. uh yeah le- legitimate business owner it doesn't have to be drugs you know i'm just like saying whatever <laughs> it would have been however obscure it, he would have gone after it really hard i reckon but who knows yeah. Wow, what, yeah, what should we do tangent. one more each and then get out of here? Mate, let's do it. It's been a, it's been a good good episode. This has, hasn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, there's quite a lot. So please feel free. You can choose choose one more. All right, I'm I'm having a look now. Have you got one already? Uh, yeah. At Hayden MTB, would you guys ever get hair transplant surgery if you were started balding? All right, so my hair's not great. I'll be honest. It's pretty bad, but I'm not sure I'd ever get hair transplant surgery. I just don't. I just don't care enough. I used to care. I don't care anymore. I always wear a hat, and I don't just wear a hat when we do the podcast. I just always wear a hat. <laughs> and yeah. then today, after my little um, little uh, compliment from the hairdresser, I was like, actually, yeah, maybe I can just rock the hair today. <laughs> and that's thanks to Athletic Greens. Yeah, Athleticgreens dot com slash the Ride Companion. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Would you get it? Um, You've got good hair, actually. I You've don't got good have hair, receding man. hair, yeah. But I don't, look, I, it, I've i actually got too much hair. But I um, yeah, I think I'd good probably, hairline. I wouldn't say no. If, if it was, if, really? if I started balding, I'd get one, if it was any good. I, don't, I actually, honestly, I'm oblivious. I don't know anything about it. But I don't hold it, you know, I wouldn't ever think anyone was stupid for getting it. I think it, if it bothers you, you should get it. I think, like, there's mm. a difference between it bothering you. You know, these, like, God, what, whatever bothers you. And if you feel that sorting it out will make your life better, then fucking right. I think there's a, yeah, there's a point. It's all about confidence. Yeah, I think there's a part of me, it's, and, and um, I mean no judgment by this, but when I see, for instance, um, certainly I notice it a lot more like, a lot more girls getting like, fillers and stuff in their face and mm. implants and stuff like that and it makes me feel sad it makes me feel like they've missed the point and like there's more work to be done just in yeah. just being happy with yourself but that's such a lame annoying thing to say but I mean I could focus in on any one of my own uh, insecurities I could try and find any one of my totally. insecurities and quickly jump on a surgery and I, but I don't think it would get me anywhere in life. I think the journey of actually realizing it's okay to have a big head, mm. or, or yeah, I'd get the dick reduced for sure, but I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to go with it. <laughs> right, there we go. We're done. We're done. Right. Uh, if you got offered, this is from Lewis Reese, thirteen. If you got offered a one-way trip to Mars, would you go? Uh, my answer is absolutely not. I've got no interest in in going to space. This this. Uh, magical mystical world is more than enough i haven't seen it yet what about you davy absolutely not mate there's no nothing worse than i think of leaving this beautiful earth and also lining billionaires pockets just so you can get up there no doubt elon would make a few quid he'd line he'd line his pockets he'd want to have a little um wet of the beak from me going to mars and i'd just be you know sacrificing life just so you can have more money <laughs> oh, it's true right there you go someone's making something right there either bezos or fucking musk like someone's making something out of it so now nah, i'm gonna stay here stay planted keep using amazon try and buy a tesla one day <laughs> please stay here um yeah not there you for go. Miles, mate. what an yeah. end to the episode thanks for joining us this has been the Roy companion thanks davy always a pleasure Mate, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you and uh, keep supporting the uh, the cause. Peace and love. Your hair looks Whatever great. <laughs> like and subscribe. Oh, that was a good episode, wasn't right, it? Episode. Really enjoyed that one, mate. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the best. One yeah, of the I best. think so. It's our best work so far. Yeah, definitely. So, what should people do if they want to keep in touch? Just there. Yep. There's there. one there. One down there. I think there's one there as well. One there as well. Like yeah. and subscribe. Thank you.